Hi, this is Trailers from Hell. I'm Arnie Leibovit. In the 1930s and 40s, long before George Powell made his classic sci-fi films like The Time Machine and The War of the Worlds, he created dozens of stop-motion animated shorts in Europe and America called Puppetoons. These musical marvels used Powell's astonishing technique of replacement figure wood puppets where he made literally thousands of them. And where, the way it worked is that each frame of film would be replaced by a separate puppet or puppet part, inconceivable to do today due to the time and labor involved. The way it happened was George was doing a commercial about cigarettes. He was so bored, he said, by drawing cigarettes in a straight line because they were cell animation that he called up the sponsor and he said, what do you think if I use your own cigarettes? You can see the trademark all the time. The sponsor loved the idea. So he actually took cigarettes and started to animate them to music. Eventually, he put heads, mouths on them so they could talk, legs on them so they could walk. Gradually, he put the flat cell cartoon into three dimension. And that was his big idea. Soon, Pal came up with the idea of a film whose characters and sets were made entirely of glass. He called it The Ship of the Ether. That was in 1934. The Phillips Company, who Pal had success with making commercials, had a glass factory. So they invited him to come to Eindhoven, Holland, to make his film. And there, Pal set up the biggest dimensional cartoon studio in Europe, where for the next six years, he created the most dazzling commercials story films that were seen in movie theaters, just like commercials are seen on television today. They were a big hit, so much so that Powell was called the Walt Disney of Europe. But always the gypsies, the Powells were itching to come to the United States. So once their visas were approved, they left for Hollywood. Timing couldn't have been better because two months later, the Nazis invaded Holland. The Powells had a history of staying one step ahead of Hitler the whole time they were in Europe. Paramount Pictures, familiar with Powell's work, offered him a deal to make puppetoons in the United States, and that lasted for almost a decade. Many of these films were nominated for Oscars, and Powell himself won an Academy Award in 1944 for the creation of the puppetoons. But that was just the beginning. Powell said he wanted to take off his short pants, shorts, and put on his long pants, features. And so he did. And the rest, as they say, is history. Here's the trailer for my film, The Puppetoon Movie. In 1987, I worked with Mrs. George Powell, special effect artist Gene Warren Jr., animator Peter Kleino, Disney composer Buddy Baker, and voice legend Paul Fries, and teams of others to create The Puppetoon Movie. New framing animation features Gumby, Pokey, Arnie the Dinosaur, Speedy Alka-Seltzer, the Pillsbury Doughboy, even our own Joe Dante's Gremlin cameos. It's hard to imagine the time and attention to detail required to bring the original puppetoons to life, a visual feast that needs to be seen to be believed. Included our Phillips broadcast of 1938, a sensation at the San Francisco World's Fair seen by Walt Disney and his animators. Jasper in a Jam with music by Louis Armstrong, Peggy Lee, and the Charlie Barnett Orchestra. Three of the Oscar-nominated films, Tulip Shaw Grow, a parody of the Nazi invasion of Holland by the Screwballs, where Ray Harryhausen was the key animator. John Henry and the Yankee Pooh, the famous folklore story that Ebony Magazine called the first film with a real black hero treated with dignity and love, and Tubby the Tuba, a poignant fairy tale about a little tuba that only wants his song to be heard. Animators from all over the world worked at the Puppetoon Studios, including King Kong's Willis O'Brien and Freddie Moore, the great Disney animator. The Puppetoons are perhaps George Powell's greatest works of originality and brilliance. Through the years, they've been copied but never equaled. A Puppetoon Movie Volume 2 is now in the works.